So as I promised, my first project now with vacuum bagging is going to be the instrument panel and dash for my uh, airplane project. So you'll see the one on the top here. This is the one that was already in it when I got the kit. And, you know, it's fine and it's kind of nice because he's given me a pattern that fits in here where it's anchored in on each side. And this is where the, the uh, conduit for the wires comes through. But as I sat in the airplane, I noticed that up here at the top, I could see a whole bunch of the front of the airplane. So there was space up here to increase the size of the instrument panel without actually impeding my view um, out the front of the airplane. So I made a new template which follows this template on the sides. Um, let's see, pretty much like that. But it, you'll see here it increases the top. So if you look at it from the back, you know, it makes it a couple inches taller in the middle and still uh, does not impede with my view out the front of the airplane, which I didn't want to do. But this new size gives me a lot more space for instrumentation. I, my plan is to put a iPad carrier right here for a touch screen in the center. Then it'll give me switches, breakers, and stuff off to the side. Um, so that's where we're at. So my thought process is I got it all fit in there, went down to the airplane, fit it in there perfectly. But then I came back here and I drew it, I traced it onto this piece of melamine. And then I went around and cut down around the perimeter because I'm going to have a couple of layers of carbon fiber on the front which in this position will be the downside against the melamine and then I'm going to put fiberglass on the back and I want it to be able to fold down and um, have an epoxy connection with the front so that's my intention there so I've kind of ran radius this so the fabric can bend down. Um, then you'll notice on this one that it has that reinforcer along the bottom, which I'm also going to do here. I'm actually going to build up here on my jig now uh, a piece that uh, comes along and allows me to bring the material over and wrap it up that side. And then I'll put a, a radius in that corner so it'll give me a nice uh, radius there. So anyway, that's the problem or the situation and that's kind of where I'm headed with it. So I will go ahead and get on to the next phase on building this jig so I can vacuum bag my dash and then I will check back in. Back at it. All right, so this is what we've got so far. The uh, pencil line is the actual um, shape of the instrument panel. So I went ahead and made up some MDF along this top. That won't be visible, but I want to have a flat spot that I will be able to anchor the top sun guard of the dash onto. So i uh, putting that there so I can have a, a tab. And then on the bottom, I want to create that um, lip for strength flat spot along the bottom. So I did put that there. I, and then I'm going to lap the fiberglass, the excuse me, the carbon fiber up this piece. Uh, so I, right now I'm going to wax this, wax all of this, and then I'm going to put a, a caulk line bead in those corners so it gives it a radius there and there so the, the fabric can go up it. I'm not sure of the wiseness of my decision to use this melamine. But I don't want it, I, I want to leave it um, open, exposed carbon fiber. But I don't want it to be glossy. I'd like kind of a matte finish. So being a newbie, not really knowing how this is going to work, I'm using this melamine, which kind of has a matte to it. And then we'll see what the carbon fiber looks like. Um, I know I used it for a countertop 
form to do a concrete counter one time and it actually worked out great. So that's my thought process. So now I'm gonna go ahead and wax this up and then get those caulk beads in the corners. And then once the fabric leaves here, I'm actually gonna cut it and I'll just let it lay down flat wildly over these ends. And then once it's all done, I'll trim it to size with the pattern. So anyway, that's my plan. So we'll get back at it and we'll check in with you on the next step. All right, another trick I learned to do these beads is once you get it all waxed up, you can actually take your caulk and just lay a line down in the corner like that. You don't want to get too much, but make sure there's enough like that. And then you take a round item. In this case, I'm using a drill bit and you simply run it down that corner like that. Okay, and you just make sure that it has a full radius bead like that. Don't try and clean it up. The theory is, is if it's waxed, once it's dry, it'll just peel right off and leave you just a piece in the corner. When I did the concrete countertop, I learned this trick and it worked pretty good. So we're gonna try it again. Anyway, we'll let that dry, then we'll be back at it. All right, so my remote battery died, so you just get to see me walk back and forth and turn the camera on a little bit. So this is my mold that I made, and I got the caulk um, in the corners, and it dried, and it cleaned right up just like they said it would which I'm pretty excited about. Now I'm just kind of checking out the little edges and making sure everything looks good so that it's uh, ready because I'm going to go ahead and vacuum bag this and uh, see how my first venture in vacuum bagging turns out. So anyway, my plan is once I get this cleaned up, I'm actually going to put some uh, clear tape on here just to make sure that it doesn't stick. It'll be underneath where it doesn't show. So I don't care if it has a different texture. And then I'm actually gonna put um, peel ply on this upper section right here because once I get it made, I'll have a dashboard made that kind of hangs over the front and guards in the sun for my instruments. And uh, that'll give me something to bond that to. So, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and stick some peel ply on there. Anyway, I'll get it all laid out and ready, and I'll be back. All right, so I got my piece all cleaned up and ready to go. I've got my carbon fiber cut to shape. I also have my um, piece of fiberglass that I'm going to put on the back cut to shape. I've got my peel ply over there ready to go and my cover plastic. So I should have everything ready. So I went ahead and poured out some epoxy. Kind of hard to know how much you need, but I don't want to mix too much. I've got plenty of time to work this, so I figured I'd do a minimal batch and then um, mix more if I needed it. So. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get this mixed, then I'm going to wet out the carbon fiber and set it in the mold and then work our way through from there. So here it is under vacuum. Sorry you didn't get any videos in there, but it was kind of a struggle, a lot worse than I thought it was going to be. Um, first of all, I forgot my plastic. and. So I tried to lay the, the carbon fiber out, wet it out, and then move it into the form. And it kind of misconformed and got all ruined. I had to cut a new piece. Then I actually put it in where it went and wet it out where it went. It worked much better. And then the next problem I had is I was using another piece of plastic. It was too thick. It wouldn't work. 
I had to hurry and run to the hardware store and grab this one mil plastic. I still have a little bit of a leak that I can't find, but it's, uh, it is vacuumed down nice and tight. You can see the little putty I've been trying to put on wherever I think it might have a leak, but I haven't got anything any better since I started trying to stay clean. So anyway, there it is. We'll let it sit and cure, and then we'll see what we get. So oh, here it is. It came out of the mold pretty good. I am happy with the texture that's on it from, from uh, forming it on the melamine. I would definitely do that part again. I am not happy with the caulk line. Uh, this doesn't look perfect like I had anticipated. Part of the problem was, I think, is I used a siliconized product rather than 100% silicone like I used on the concrete. I think it allowed itself to be a little bit uh, more flexible. Um, the second problem is, is I didn't get it all the way down in the corner. The top I did really good, but this bottom isn't quite down in the corner. I know that was because I was fighting my um, plastic. I had too thick a plastic and I couldn't get it to go over and go down in the corner. And so I, while it was drying, I had to run down to the hardware store and grab some one mil plastic which when I got to Home Depot there was a hundred people waiting outside of the store with the whole COVID thing so by the time I got back things had dried up a little bit and I couldn't get that down in the corner like I'd liked but it isn't in a visible position so I am happy with it I am going to go ahead and use it and learn from it for my next project so things I would do different number one I would use a different caulk in those corners and then maybe when I put my peel ply on, actually have it lap over the, the uh, caulked corner rather than end when it started so that the, the caulk is actually covered up by the peel ply. Uh, secondly, I would have plastic here to wet out my carbon fiber on so that it would be easier to transfer it to the mold without uh, disforming and changing shapes as I ended up having to redo one. Um, so I would definitely change that. Um, other than that, I am happy with it. I'm going to go ahead now. Here's my pattern. So I can put my, my pattern on here and then trim these edges that I purposely left long. I had it fit up here on the top just perfect. But on these edges, I just left them long. So I'll have to trim those. And then it should be ready to go in the airplane different is I did have a leak from duct taping it down to my mold. So I think if I'm doing totally flat product, the duct tape is a great idea. But where this had some three dimension to it, I, I think with my pleats on the ends and leaving extra plastic space, I couldn't get it all sealed off. So I think I'll go ahead and get some of that seal putty that they use and use that next time. The next thing I'm going to be making is this eyebrow. For the top of the dash. I have to go down to the airport, get this in place, make a template of that with cardboard, and then uh, work out a jig to build that. I might just build it flat and then um, fasten it to this, this flange on the dash that I left right here to hold the shape. Probably how I will do it rather than make a three-dimensional mold. But I am working on, and maybe you guys have some suggestions, because from this point over to this point, I actually want it to protrude and then kind of round out like this and round back to give some glare protection to my instruments. I don't really want it just to be a thin piece out there. I'd like to figure out a way to add a bullnose on the end. Um, it would be a three-dimensional bullnose because it would not be a straight line. Um, but if any of you have ever done anything like that, maybe send me some suggestions on best way to pattern that up. Anyway, there's the dashboard. I am happy with it. I uh, look forward to getting it in the plane and working on the eyebrow portion of the dashboard. Uh, so I'd like you guys to feel free to follow along with my project and subscribe to my channel. Also go ahead and push the like button and the little bell there. 
and we'll keep sending out the movies. I know that I started making these because I started searching on the internet for videos to kind of help me learn and understand and, and start building these projects and there just wasn't any on there or very very few and so I decided that I'm going to inst I'm going to uh, investigate and ply my way through these projects and go ahead and put them on video for two reasons one is so you guys can follow along and get any ideas for yourself and the second reason is is because maybe you can help me out with ideas on for, on my end so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and get back to work on getting this trimmed and down in the airplane and make up a pattern for the brow so until next time happy flying and get back at it